Hello everyone, I'm Therese Wong. Today I'd like to talk about shoulders. When I tell my students to incorporate upper arm movement into their playing, some are mistaken by simply lifting their elbows up or to the side. So today I'd like to remind you how to uh, incorporate uh, the whole arm movement by bringing up the upper arm with the shoulders, and um, the chest muscle here. Now, sometimes when I tell my students to move the whole arm to the side, they will shrug the shoulders up. What happens is when you shrug your shoulder up, your fingers is actually higher from the keyboard and you have to hit louder and harder to get the notes and it will create a harsh sound. So try to keep your shoulders level when you move your whole arm to the side, up and down. Instead of lifting the shoulders or the elbows up. And when you rotate your whole arm, the upper arm, from the shoulder socket, you create a long line, a circular line when you go down. So it's more like an oval shape. Like this. Yeah? So for the right side, you go anti clockwise. And for the left side, clockwise. A lot of the times people tell me that they have trouble controlling their left hands, the left fingers, as they call it. But simply it's not the problem about the hands or the fingers. Well, sometimes it's about the hand grip. Um, but a lot of the times it's because they are trying to squeeze their upper arm. So when you're going from the base to the high register, they try to do this by pressing the palm down towards the keys and the wrist down. They want to drag the wrist this way and there's no space for the arm to move along the keyboard. So keep, always keep some space between the arm and the torso. When you have to move up, you have to move your upper torso a little bit to the side, okay? To create some space for the arm to move along. Otherwise, it would go like this. You have to really lift your shoulders, go that way, but then the fingers are all lifted up from the keys, which is what, not what we want to do. So try to create some space here, but not to curl the right side when you move to the right. right? You keep your torso high, up, straight. Like this. So the whole motion is like this. So when we practice this technique, try not to play anything. The first thing to acquire the correct technique is to master the motion without playing in silence, slowly. Now, we simply move this. Try to really open up this part. A lot of people do this, right? They crouch, the back, the shoulders. So try to open up this part. Right? Chest open. And then, do the circular movement. If you don't know if you're moving this part, simply put your right hand over this socket and the chest muscle here. And feel if you are really initiating the whole arm movement all the way up here, instead of like this. Right? This is very angular and abrupt, and it's not smooth. But so we want to do it is to do a circular smooth and continuous movement and the sound will just be the same very smooth and continuous that's what we want in our long phrasing like gato playing so the same thing goes for the right side put your left hand here and then move your right arm 
create a circular movement. The, more like an oval shape instead of a big circle, right? Because the keyboard is like this, so we want to move along like this. Only go up this way, turn around. Yeah. to master the motion in silence away from the keyboard then do this motion in your playing slowly you can try uh, practicing the scale right? then um, try this motion in your songs that you've been working on Slowly, very consciously, we focus, see if you're really getting this motion right. Generating the whole arm movement all the way up here. Until next time, this is Teresa Wong from the Teresa Wong's Piano Studio. Cheers! <laughs>